Hi everyone, we got our last animal of the day for uh, stuff down at the intertidal zone, the beach. Uh, our animal of the day, uh, today, uh, echinoderms. Uh, echinoderms, uh, examples include, I'm not supposed to call them starfish, I'm supposed to call them sea stars. They're not a fish, so I'm supposed to say sea stars, uh, sand dollars, uh, sea cucumbers, and uh, sea urchins. What makes an echinoderm an echinoderm is they don't move by two feet, they move by tube feet. Uh, I'm talking they move by tube feet. Uh, underneath our uh, sea star here, uh, there's a whole bunch of these little suction cup feet right here. And these suction cup feet are called tube feet. And that's how these things move around. Uh, first of all, uh, let's take a minute and talk about uh, sea stars. What they eat. They love to eat bivalves. How's uh, this thing going to eat this clam? Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, attach onto the clam and with the suction cup tube feet, it's going to wrap around it. And then what it's going to start to do is it's going to start to pull on the clam, try to open it up. But then the clam's just going to flex its abductor muscle. It's going to be flexing its abductor muscle, but the sea star's not going to give up. He's going to keep pulling for eight hours. And after eight hours, the clam's abductor muscle is going to get a little bit tired. And when it gets a little bit tired, then the clam shell is going to open up just a little bit. That's what the sea star has been waiting for. Underneath the sea star, there's this hole. Uh, this is its mouth. Uh, sea star doesn't have any teeth. So then how does it eat this clam? What it does is it gets that mouth right over uh, that opening. And then it, and then, and then it, and then what it does is it pukes out its stomach out of this hole. Its stomach then surrounds the clam on the inside, and then the stomach starts making stomach acid. After four to six hours, it's going to totally liquefy the stomach out of the clam inside the clam shell, and then it's just going to suck it in into that hole. Uh, that method of eating is called stomach extrusion. So the sea star, uh, they eat bivalves. They eat it by this method called the stomach extrusion going to get into the different types of sea stars why don't we do it right now uh there's a couple types that you see down at the beach uh there's a mottled sea star and a purple sea star a mottled sea star and a purple sea star they look pretty much the same uh both of them have uh five arms uh both of them come in the same colors they come in purple uh both of them come in orange both come in gray a couple of them come in like a little bit of a reddish color but what makes a purple sea star different from a mottled sea star is two things one, the purple sea star has a little bit thicker legs than the mottled sea star. Another thing is a purple sea star has this pentagon right in the middle. You see this pentagon shape right here? Uh, that makes a purple sea star a purple sea star. A mottled sea star does not have that. Another sea star that you see down the beach, uh, these things, sunflower sea stars. Sunflower sea stars, they get up to be three feet across. They have 24 arms. Uh, they move quite fast, and they're called the sunflower sea star. Um, something came up a couple years ago. Uh, the sea, uh, sea star wasting disease. People were going down the beach, and they saw these sea stars that were just kind of like, they look sick. Uh, they were really limp. And then, uh, then they noticed that there's dead sea stars everywhere. Divers would go to these piers and they just see that bottom of these piers just be uh, littered with dead sea stars and very few uh, sea stars on, on the on the piers itself. It caught everybody to, uh, by surprise and it took a year and a half to figure out what was going on with all these sea stars. Obviously they were getting sick, but what was making them sick? Well, just like what's going around in the world right now, uh, there was a virus uh, that was attacking the sea stars. And this virus would go and it infect one sea star, uh, destroy that sea star, and then as that destroys, it makes more viruses, and then they start going and attacking other sea stars, just kind of what's happening in the world today. Um, why did this virus show up here in the Puget Sound that hadn't been seen before? Well, it coincided perfectly with the blob. Uh, we talked about the blob uh, a couple months ago in class. The blob was this huge warm water mass that formed off of Washington, Oregon, and California. And it stayed there for two years. Well, this virus uh, that attacks the sea stars, it can't live in cold water. So since it was warm water in there, then the virus started working its way up into the Puget Sound area. In fact, went all the way up to Alaska, uh, uh, killing sea stars up there. Now... I used to go to the beach all the time and see sea stars everywhere. And this was like five years ago. 
uh, every year in class, I would turn over a rock and then I'd find a, a little baby sea star about the size of a quarter. And I'd rip it off the rock and bring it in and keep it in the tank of joy. And then we'd watch it grow throughout the semester and, and we'd get it grow about a good half inch. Uh, but I've been looking for a baby sea star now for five years and I haven't found one. See, sea stars are broadcast spawners. And uh, since now there's not many sea stars around, and there's like one right here, and another one might be five miles away. When they release their eggs and their gukumbaki out in the water, since they're not in close proximity, uh, the eggs and gukumbaki don't meet. So there's uh, there's not a, like, a good likelihood of the of the babies uh, coming back. So that's why the sea star population in Puget Sound is taking a long time to recover. If sea stars were important to us, what we do is we raise a bunch of them in a hatchery. Then we put them uh, out in the wild in a very congregated area. So then they have a chance to reproduce, release their eggs and goo come back in the water and have them meet. And then have those mirroplankton swim around and then relocate to another area. Uh, I guess these things aren't valued as much uh, for us right now. So we just got to let, let nature take its course. And it's going to take a good uh, decade or so before the sea stars come back in the Puget Sound. Don't want to make this video too long. Uh, so what we talked about is uh, echinoderms. Uh, they move by tube feet. Uh, one example are the sea stars who eat clams and elder mussels. And they eat it by this method called stomach extrusion. Uh, there's the mottled sea star. There's a purple sea star and there's sun, sunflower sea star. Um, the next uh, echinoderm I want to talk about is sand dollars. And really what I want you to know is what makes it a live sand dollar different from a dead sand dollar other than the obvious. Obviously, this one's dead. Uh, you've seen these things down on the beach. You love finding these. But what makes a live sand dollar different? A live sand dollar is either brown or black. What makes them brown or black? Uh, what makes them brown or black is all their tiny tube feet. And they're either brown tube feet or they're black tube feet. So it's an echinoderm. It moves around the bottom and it eats detritus. Uh, with its uh, little tube feet, if you need to try its lands on it, it passes it on the underneath side. If these things crawling around on the sand, it's looking for detritus. And then again, like the sea star, uh, there's its mouth. It doesn't eat by stomach extrusion, but it uses its tube feet to pass the detritus into it. And that's what it eats. I'm going to show you a link to a video uh, a little bit later uh, about what a living sand dollar looks like. Next one, uh, sea cucumbers. Yeah. Sea cucumbers, they, uh, they look like a sea cucumber. Uh, sea cucumbers, they have a strange defense mechanisms. Sea cucumbers is uh, about four to six inches long. Uh, they have tiny tube feet. They don't move fat that fast. Uh, where you find a sea cucumber is like lodged underneath a rock. They'll suck to the underneath side of the rock. And then they have these orange feathery tentacles that go out and they grab detritus. Their defense mechanism is that if they get scared... If a predator comes and like grabs it off the rock and is going to try to eat it, well, its defense mechanism is going to, again, it's, it's going to, I mean, it's going to, oh, I mean, it's going to puke out all of its guts. How is that a defense mechanism? Well, its predator will go, well, rather than ripping this thing apart, here's guts, or it eats the guts, and it forgets about the sea cucumber. After about three to six weeks, the sea cucumber then regenerates the guts, and that's how it's able to survive the attack. I'm not saying do it, but it's kind of tempting. You get a sea cucumber and scare it a little bit, and then it's going to puke out of the guts out of one side, and you can see what the guts of the sea cucumber look like. Uh, last one, uh, sea urchins. Uh, we saw that video in class about the bull kelp and uh, with the sea urchins eating the whole fast. The sea urchin uh, is a round thing. It has all these little spikes that come off of it. And these spikes are kind of like porcupine spikes, but they're considered to be its two feet. And then it also has other section cup two feet on, on the knee side of it. Uh, I'm going to send you a couple more links to a couple other videos that are a little bit more professionally done than this one. Uh, this is our last animal of the day of animals down at the beach. Uh, all of our other videos are going to be about fish. And you know what you get to do? You get to take notes over these videos. <laughs> yes, we're going to have a test over that. Not this stuff, but over fish. Can't wait for it. See you soon.